I think that people are uh, creatures of habit in many ways, and uh, the power of habit is very, very difficult to overestimate. Um, habits are, uh, uh, are inculcated over many years of learning, and uh, habits are very difficult to change. Uh, one of the reasons habits are so difficult to change is that we are often unaware of those habits when they actually occur. We may become aware of them at a subsequent point in time or as a function of the consequences of those habits, but the very habits themselves, almost by definition, we have relatively little awareness of. Uh, and that makes it hard to change. And so intellectually a person may know that this would really be a good thing or you can take something that very clearly is deleterious to a person's health like cigarette smoking where the scientific evidence is incontrovertible that cigarette smoking is bad for your health most smokers will tell you that they would like to stop they know that they should stop and they just can't they've tried uh, and uh, that's an example of a real habit uh, and those kinds of habits are very very difficult to change uh, but uh, I uh, do fervently believe that they can be changed with the right kind of training but uh, I also hold to the view that there are no there there are not going to be magic bullets um, Americans in particular are always looking for a quick fix. Uh, I often get approached by people who are developing biofeedback or neurofeedback devices to try to speed up meditation, um, to figure out some technological trick that would enable us to do this more, uh, more quickly and more uh, efficiently. The fact is that um, Buddhist meditation practices, for example, have been around for 2,500 years. Uh, there has been a lot of trial and error during that very significant period of time. And uh, I, for one, don't believe really that there's any substitute for the hard work required to practice.